what um, Hyderabad has done or Pune has done and so on, it takes. The last ingredient that I want to talk about, which will lead me to the future, was, um, was the um, entrepreneurship capability. Um, uh, the, you know, while, you know, the, the picture that I painted uh, with regard to the companies which were around in 1980s, they were all entrepreneurial driven. Of course, even in the Tata group, it's the entrepreneurship that has been valued for a long period of time in the sense that there were individual companies, but you can't think of Tata Steel um, except to think of Rusi Modi or uh, Jamshid Irani and so on, uh, truly created uh, a phenomenal kind of organization. Or you can't think of Tata, um, uh, Tata Motors without think of, thinking of Sumad Malgaonkar. And uh, you can't think of Tata Chemicals without thinking of Darbari Sheikh. You can't think of Indian Hotels without thinking of Ajit Kerkar. You know, there was a period of time within the, um, within the group itself where entrepreneurship was, was um, uh, you know, it excelled in entrepreneurship. And of course, uh, over a period of time, I think it has uh, uh, ensured that it has created many leaders as a result of entrepreneurship. And uh, Mr. Kohli was uh, one such um, entrepreneur who really shaped the company, but more importantly, shaped the industry. He was the one who essentially, in 1976, that was the time, you know, I'm going to take you back a little before I come to the future. You know, India has been fairly uh, good in computers. You know, if you take uh, the first real work in creating, a, uh, developing a computer took place in TIFR, Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. And from 1957 uh, to 1962, they worked, uh, they worked on a computer, uh, development of a computer called the uh, TIFRAC, T-I-F-R-A-C, Automated Computing Equipment. So that computer was built there. Uh, Indians, uh, around the same time, a little later, uh, by about 1964, uh, Indian Statistical Institute and Jadavpur University um, uh, developed another uh, 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 computer uh, uh, called ISUJU, I-S-U-J-U. That was the one. You know, uh, when uh, when IBM was around in the first uh, instance, you know, the first Indian um, as the managing director of IBM in India was a person called Dan Gupta, um, S.M. Gupta. So uh, Dan Gupta was once telling me that when they started a training program of IBM in India, they invited Mr. Jawala Nehru, who was the Prime Minister of India, this was early 1960s, to come and uh, inaugurate a training program. And Mr. Nehru came and inaugurated the training program. And therefore, there was a lot of emphasis during the, I would call the Nehruvian period, uh, although he might be castigated now for many things, but uh, Nehruvian period in terms of development of these scientific and many other capabilities, technological capabilities and so on. But after 1962-64 and so on, there was really nothing that was really uh, done because India had become very socialistic and so on. And uh, for a long time, the only computer that was available was 1401. And we were importing 1401 till 1977, and 1401 was discarded by IBM in 1964. After that, they never sold 1401 in the United States. And the last computer installation of IBM 1401 was in 1977 here. So we were using discarded ones at that uh, time. And therefore, in 1976, this was the kind of condition, and TCS had by then managed to get a large computer and so on, and Burroughs computers. Mr. Kohli made a speech in uh, Ahmedabad in the Computer Society of India annual convention, more or less saying that, um, you know, we missed the Industrial Revolution for, um, uh, for many reasons. Uh, you know, we didn't have the mechanical bias, we didn't have the mechanical temperament and so on. But the new revolution, and he called it information revolution, which is a term that he used at that time, uh, doesn't require mechanical bias or mechanical temperament. It, is, uh, it requires the ability to think clearly. And this we have in abundance. And therefore, if he misses this opportunity, not only participating, but of becoming a leader in this field, generations to come will never forgive us for our tardiness. This was his uh, speech in 1976 in Ahmedabad. So that is why, you know, since I have worked closely with him, he was truly a very important kind of, um, I mean, uh, the one who shaped this industry. And uh, of course, the general direction that he gave resulted in many others coming in. For instance, 
Infosys uh, was started by Narayan Murthy and others in 1981, and um, uh, we had Wipro becoming a very major force, first with hardware and then after with software, um, uh, coming around uh, in the early 80s and so on. Shiv Nadar was making a huge uh, um, uh, thing, more from the hardware industry initially, and thereafter, of course, uh, in the software area as well. So these were the true pioneers who really came in. And, uh, and then um, the last um, major one that came up was uh, Cognizant, which came from behind, but overtook Infosys uh, to become the number two organization now uh, in terms of uh, revenues and so on. So this is the journey that, um, uh, that uh, you know, uh, uh, which Chennai took. And today, if anyone thinks in terms of uh, setting up a, uh, uh, you know, services organization, Chennai would certainly be one of the key places that you would think about anywhere in the world. You know, the move, there are two things that, uh, that are very critical from an uh, um, attracting. One is, of course, you want the services company to come here and keep growing and so on. You know, I used to uh, complain uh, uh, in 2003 and uh, so on, by which, by which time, uh, you know, OMR was coming up and many others said that uh, my trip to the airport was taking much longer. Commuting to the airport was much, uh, taking much longer. The traffic was building up in a very bad uh, kind of manner and so on. But those were um, essentially uh, many things that were pushing uh, us uh, to keep growing. So the, uh, you know, some of these organizations continue to grow and I think that will grow. The another motivation that's coming up is what is called the global cap capability centers. Uh, these are captive organizations that are being set up by large organizations across the world to create their global capability center in um, uh, in India. And Chennai is usually the place that they consider uh, for the purpose of developing the, that for the same reason that I had talked about, which is in terms of availability of people, which is in terms of the infrastructure that's available. And, and therefore, there is, uh, and, and uh, more importantly, over a period, there was a very big interaction between academic and uh, industry uh, in terms of that's the point that I want to come to. One of the very interesting things that got established during this period was the IIT Madras Research Park, a um, model that has been existing in many other, um, so for, for instance, if you go to Coimbatore and uh, PSG Industrial Complex, you have got uh, uh, something there which essentially encourages incubation and uh, uh, which encourages uh, many people to set up their own research centers and so on. The main thing as far as IIT Madras Research Park was the connection between the research park, uh, people who are occupying places there, and IIT Madras itself in terms of the, uh, you know, and therefore you essentially have, are able to reduce the rent by participating as a visiting faculty in uh, an interaction of that kind of scale and so on. And there, and uh, as a result of uh, many of these interactions, it has also set up the incubation center in um, IIT Madras, and, um, uh, and, and that has already produced about four unicorns. Of course, Bangalore leads uh, in unicorns. I mean, unicorns are those with uh, over $1 billion valuation uh, at a point, and uh, Bangalore leads that. But I think, uh, you know, from uh, entrepreneurship, Chennai is also getting there. And uh, I think in a few years' time, uh, the... Uh, you know, we, we should be in a position to uh, create um, or substantially come close to what Bangalore is doing. Bangalore is essentially, there are many reasons why it has taken the mind share. And that's all, you know, like for instance, in TCS, we used to always say that you need to have a big competitor. Who, uh, and uh, without that, you cannot grow. And, uh, uh, you know, we found initially Infosys to be a very big competitor. TCS is about... Uh, $25 billion in terms of turnover, and um, Infosys is about uh, a little, about half of that at this moment in time. So we have taken a quite a bit of lead, but if we didn't have some of these formidable competitors, it would not be, and therefore uh, Bangalore needs to exist for Chennai to grow, and Chennai needs to exist for Bangalore to grow, uh, because I think these will be the two very important hubs uh, that we will have in India in terms of growing. What is the next step? that we needed to uh, 
look at uh, uh, this thing. The next step is, uh, you know, if you really look at uh, the industry or the industry itself, it has redefined itself. None of us understand the future. Um, and I'll make a reference to that. Um, you know, just think back on the payment systems that has existed in India from 1950s and so on, my lifetime. Um, you know, we were writing checks. We were going to the branch and uh, uh, presenting checks. Or uh, And if we gave an outstation check, then we paid a huge amount of money as uh, uh, collection charges and uh, all that kind of thing. I think, you know, everything was manual. Clearing operation itself became a very, very uh, important one from the ability to transfer that check amount to your credit in your bank account. You know, this came through the clearing one. Then the ATMs got developed over a period uh, of time. You know, even before the ATMs, uh, you know, the uh, computerization of banks were taking place in standalone fashion. Uh, because the unions would not allow network computers, even as late as 1983, 84, and so on. So um, uh, many of this, and I think uh, yesterday you were talking about your involvement as far as Bank of Majura was concerned. And uh, we developed the first single branch uh, system there because we were not about allowed to network at that point in time. And um, after that, you just look at, um, you know, come a little more, and you find that communication links have really developed substantially. In, uh, uh, and therefore, communication revolution took place along with the computer revolution in terms of technology and so on. And therefore, linking everything, internet came in 1995. And uh, Bill Gates was famously supposed to miss that revolution, which he caught up a little later with, and so on. And, um, and then, uh, lots of other things uh, came in. You know, you talked about Sridhar Bembu coming, coming here and giving a uh, talk. Phenomenal in terms of the SA, uh, SA's uh, SaaS capability that he has essentially demonstrated. But even that technology, I don't know whether he told you that or not, even that technology uh, was in the offing for about 10 years before it became a reality. We used to talk about application software providers, ASPs, much earlier. And then, of course, SaaS revolution came along and uh, changed that. But um, things... Uh,